Can I do one of these? I feel like I should be part of the carnage too. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. oh my god, look at him. I'm done. I'm done. I'm good for today. Vietnam boasts cuisine as diverse as its geography. In the north, one could argue Hanoi's signature dish is bún cha. It's like this sweet, savory, rich smoke coming off the grill. Down south in Saigon, they grill up mouth-watering pork chops with broken rice. This has got to be one of my top five favorite meals in Saigon. Mm, so good. Then there's Ninh Binh. Ninh Binh is home to some of Vietnam's most majestic and impressive natural landscapes. But I'm here to discover the unique local foods that make this place stand out as much as its mountaintops. I think you can just eat the shell and everything. It's kind of like eating your fingernails. From noodles you never even knew existed. Oh my god. Is right? This is all eel blood, everyone. To the media salad in Asia. Forget your Italian vinaigrette, huh? This is a pork dressing. I even take on a hunting experience that reignites my childhood fears. Is it gonna hurt me? A little bit. Come on, you big boy. So pull up your sleeves, throw on your cone hat, and prepare to catch your own dinner. We're going on a deep food mission in Ninh Binh, Vietnam. Today, Hanoi local and one trip guide La joins me for a special Ninh Binh breakfast. We are in Ninh Binh focusing on different delicacies. Today we're having kind of an unusual breakfast. Forget your cornflakes. We have eel and we're putting it on noodles. The owner is here right before us now. Thank you so much for having us here today. This place has been dominating the eel noodle game since 1973. A dish so beloved by locals that when we showed up at 8 a.m., there wasn't an open seat in the house. Can you tell me what is so special about Ninh Binh? They said the favorite in Ninh Binh is uh, the food. The food is famous for the goat meat oh, and yeah. even the eel noodle. If, like me, you've already fallen in love with other Vietnamese noodles, there's no reason to not give these a try. A fresh bowl bursting with flavors of the ocean Ocean, or maybe the river. Are these freshwater eel or are they from the ocean? There's fresh eel in the river. And then here they have this really dark brown broth. What is that made from? The brow is made out of the eel bone and even the eel blood. Oh my god. This is all eel blood, everyone. Can we ask her to make a bowl for us? Uh, mo eel noodle, please. Một bát miến lươn. Yeah. Mm. Now to the good stuff. Start by blanching dark glass noodles in hot water. Add in MSG, herbs, then a twisted dark nest of freshwater eel. It's hard to say how much eel I need in one day, but that's probably about it right there. Next, add fried shallots and some steaming rich dark brown broth. And that is breakfast, baby. Should we go eat? Of course. The moment has come. We have our glass eel noodles here. Oh, hello, sir. What is going on in there? Do people usually drink here in the morning? People don't usually drink wine in the morning, but he's really like you. Oh, hey. So that's why. Cheers. Mmm, that's a good breakfast wine. Smooth, sweet, not too strong. If you're gonna get a little buzz for breakfast, that's the way to do it. Yeah. Sir, thank you for sharing this with us. Yeah. This joint is awesome. It's completely packed behind us. Everyone is jacked about eating eels for breakfast. The broth here is so murky. The only way I can describe it is like a little swamp. No offense. I want to grab some of that broth and figure it out. Okay, eel soup. Oh, that's delicious. It's just savory, like slightly earthy. It's stunning. Should we mix it up from here? Yes, we mix it up. This is the, always the saddest part of eating Vietnamese food. I mean, we have to just take this beautiful construction and really tear it apart. Look at that. That is a whole freshwater eel. Should I do it like that? You can put it in the spoon. Do you really eat it that way? Her bite construction, it's very cute. Each bite, they were just placed perfectly like they're doing a photo shoot. Oh, we're going for it. Mmm, the body is very tender. It just comes apart very easily in your mouth. A little bit leathery, chewy texture. I like it. You know, the dish is in the north is quite balanced. Yeah. That's why people usually put like a chili here, the lime here, and even some vinegar because people respect your taste. Let's get another big bite. You ready? Yes. Let's go for it. The flavors overall, it's just savory and kind of gentle. And that does remind me of kind of northern Vietnamese food. Nothing too intense, but if you want to make it intense, I mean, they have a whole basket of flavors right here. So it's all up to you. I want to sing. I want to sing. Mm -hmm. 
We are basically in the suburbs of Ninbin here, and we're going to a special house where the man of the house used to be a chef in Hanoi. He's come out of retirement to cook this next dish. But what is the dish? They're called rice patty eels, and they're anything but friendly. It's like the eel, but mm. it's the very, very angry. Despite the fact that it's an angry eel, people here still love it and even put it in their food. I don't want this angry eel. I'm not doing it. Come back. This is a very rare dish. Even in Ninbin, there are only three restaurants serving it. My man, thank you so much for inviting us here today. First of all, I was a little bit scared. I'm not doing it. But now, I've never seen a meal more beautiful than this. Hell yeah. We have a little bit of everything here. We got chilies, shallots, lemongrass. This is the salad made from the eel. Stunning, it looks like it's breaded. Preparing this takes time, patience, and skill. First, the eels are doused in vinegar and salt water, allowing you to get a better grip on them. These are some heavy duty tools for eel filleting, but they have some super tough skin on the outside. Sir, is this why you retired from being a chef? because this looks really hard. <laughs> After skinning, the eel is gently and carefully filleted, then cut into thin slices. Next, local galango, very similar to ginger, is finely minced, and he squeezes the natural juices onto the eel. The chef then combines minced galango with MSG, lemongrass, fried shallots, lime leaves. This all gets a final coating of fried ground rice, garnish, and plate. I wanted to just take a moment to taste right here. It's the eel alone and see how I feel about it emotionally. Mm, still that really fresh, raw flavor. Little fishy, but in a good way. The main protein of this meal will actually be outshined by its accompanying sauce, a vibrant orange color consisting mainly of everyone's favorite salad dressing ingredient pork meat. Yes, this sauce is mainly a pork puree. The fact that this is like half pork is what really blows my mind. First, stir fry the pork with shallots, chilies, shrimp paste, chili paste, MSG, sugar, and water. I mean, forget your Italian vinaigrette. This is a pork dressing. Steam it, blend it, then dump it, add in pureed sour fermented rice and cashew oil. Really rich, vibrant cashew oil. Turn everything this beautiful shade of red. Add in more sugar, let it boil, and then it's ready to eat. A little bit of sauce, put it in the cracker. I took a little too much, I think. <laughs> mm. The pork is not so obvious in there, but the taste is very savory at first and then just completely kind of a rich sourness. Oh, I love it. You can eat it like this or eat it like a pro. So you just load this up with like every herb. The crack and uh, the fig leaf are good for your health. Oh, and then we make it kind of a cone. All right, how's that? That's a pretty good cone, huh? Here, I'm gonna put in some shallots. One chili? Yeah. You guys saw that, that's right. From there, put a lot of sauce inside. Look at this beauty right here. Is it a one biter? Oh yeah, he just, <laughs> don't tell, show. Here we go. Mmm, wow. That is quite a mix of flavors, my God. Like, these are all really strongly flavored herbs. And then on top of that, it's like meat, the chilies and shallots are both raw, and then it's very sour kind of orange soup, we're calling it here. Together, it's all delicious, but so strong. To that, I will say cheers, and thank you so much for this meal. Mo hai ba yo! I didn't, I, I didn't cough, cut it, edit that out. <clears throat> I'm fun. Together on this pilgrim trail. There's one more delicacy that I cannot leave without trying. Local Ninbin mud crabs. The only problem is we need to catch them before we eat them. One trip guide Sang will introduce me to my teacher. We are here with the crab catching master, Sin Chow. Thank you for joining us today. Vietnamese countryside, nothing goes to waste. Not even little mud crabs. This afternoon, I'm joining Miss Lat and her daughter. Miss Lat is a retired farmer with years of mud crabbing experience under her cone hat. These hats are so useful in blocking the sun and the rain, and you can flip it upside down and play a game of dice. How come there's mostly ladies wearing these? They oh. That is the local traditional to identify women and men. I don't know. Oops. <laughs> mud crab hunting. Step one, say goodbye to your shoes. <laughs> I'm getting like a mud treatment on my feet. Step two, watch and learn. Oh, we got something. I was gonna mic up the sound of her digging it out, but right here we can just ask him some questions. How do you feel? You just got caught. What's that like? 
That was a dumb idea, obviously. Step three, get your hands dirty. I'm gonna just kind of blindly stick my hand in there and see if anything claws into it. Is it gonna hurt me? A little bit. Come on, you're a big boy. Oh, Jesus. Oh, there's a crab in here. It's still alive. Look at this. Oh, he's, he's doing a little side shuffle. Whoa, so what kind of crab is this? It is rice field crab. Oh, you're like, we're in a rice field, it's a crab, it's a rice field crab. When you cook normally, how many of these do we need? I like one. As he said, around 200 grams of crab. Guys, I got a snail. <laughs> what kind of snail is it? Is it a rice field snail? No, it's a river snail. Oh, really? Oh, it's trying to get away. Yes, look at this. He's pumped, he's not even that freaked out. Yeah, he's a little fighter. All right, we have yet another to add to the bucket. There we go. So guys, we're gonna spend two to three more hours collecting crabs here before we head back and cook these up. After several, several hours of crab hunting, we finally caught enough for a whole meal. And Miss Lat has invited me to her kitchen to show me what's next. Some of you are not gonna like how they dispatch these crabs. A delicious meal does not come without a cost. So I wanna say thank you to these little crabs. But while they're doing that, they're putting these into two different kind of categories here. Which one are we gonna eat? The head is not edible. So we just need this to pull out all the meat inside. However, here the body without the head, as far as I know, this is gonna be fried soon. And I think you can just eat the shell and everything. It's kind of like eating your fingernails. Can I do one of these? I feel like I should be part of the carnage too. One hand holds the head and one hand holds the leg. Pull it out. Oh, that's pretty easy. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. oh my God, look at him. I'm done. I'm done. I'm good for today. Oh, buddy. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's in the way. Remove the sensitive part of the crab. Oh, take out the PP. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Our soon to be fried crabs get a dose of lemongrass, salt, MSG, pepper, and sour fermented rice. This is the most fermented rice I've seen in one day. I've never seen it used this much in cooking. Then add jungle honey, beetle leaves, and let it fry. The crab in the countryside, they normally feed on the right field from the snail insects, so the meat is more dense and more flavors. Well, look at all this food, guys. Thank you so much for doing this. We have the fried crab here, and then this is the soup from the crabs. I want to try this one really bad. Apricot lip and some kip lip. Put a little crabby on there, and then we're gonna wrap it up by, you put it in some chili sauce. Cheers. Oh, that's cool. It's a bit hard and a little gritty in some parts, but actually the taste is just like a fried potato almost. I want to try one of these bad boys alone. Big, beautiful crab. That is good. The shell, super crunchy, and then there's some meat inside. It's kind of a livery flavor meat. I did not expect it to be so delicious. When is the last time you made this? Oh, she said she had this almost every day. When people have it, they normally have a cup of strong wine. Oh, yeah, where's the wine? Oh, really? What? That's really thoughtful of hers. Oh yeah, that's some uh, strong rice wine. In a family meal, normally the children will pour the rice for their parents. Yes, so that will be your <laughs> role. Well, how old were you when you started pouring your parents' shots? Uh, six. Gosh, you know, I'm really coming around on this having kids thing. Mo, hi, ba, yo. Thank you. You gotta chase it, another crab. Mm, that's good drinking food. I wanna say thank you so much for this experience today, showing me how to catch the crabs, showing me how to cook the crabs, and just showing me some nice Ninbin hospitality. It's been a real treat for me, so thank you so much. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank both of you for joining me today. And for you guys, this video was made possible by One Trip Vietnam. One Trip is the highest rated tour company in Vietnam, doing tours from north to south in all major cities, including Hanoi, Nha Trang, Da Nang, Hoi An, and Saigon. You can experience food tours, adventure tours, and more. Right now, One Trip is doing tours from Hanoi to Ninh Binh. To learn more about One Trip, check out the links in the description down below. I'll see you next time. A piece.